Good morning. Good morning. For me, what a better place to spend Valentine's Day than with some of my favorite people in the world who I love so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be at the Daily News. It's especially a pleasure to be at the Daily News and not being grilled by the editorial board, which is why I'm normally here. Uh, but first, I want to thank Mr. Robert York, and I want to thank all the team at the Daily News for uh, giving us this hospitality. Let's give them a round of applause. I want to thank my colleagues who are joining us here today, our Assembly and Senate members. Let's give them a round of applause. The victims of child sexual abuse who fought the fight year after year after year, uh, especially Mar Marcy Hamilton. Let's give them a round of applause. And a special welcome to the legislators who started this crusade. Uh, first and foremost, Assembly Member Margaret, Margaret Markey. Uh, let's give her a round of applause. And we have Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson, who was one of the early pioneers also. Let's give Ruth a round of applause. And our current sponsors, Linda Rosenthal and Brad Hoyleman, who you'll hear from in a moment. This is an emotional day uh, for all of us for different reasons and on different levels, but there is no doubt uh, that this is truly an emotional day. It's been a long, it's been a difficult journey through ugly terrain to reach the light on the other side that we will reach when we sign this bill. And I think there are many lessons that we should remember during this period of time. At a time when people are frustrated and politics is extreme and sometimes irrational, when credibility of government officials is waning, when we see revered institutions crumbling, today reminds us that we can still do good things when all of us does our job to the best of our ability. Why are we... Why are we at the Daily News today? Because one lesson is that true journalism still matters. It's not enough, it's not enough to have facts and righteousness on your side. If one is trying to take on major institutions and challenge the status quo and raise an ugly reality, the first step is still exposure. The first step is to tell the truth, that citizens must understand the problem. And it's the citizens that must demand change before the political process will act. Theoretically, traditionally, the way I was raised, that is the role of journalists to reveal the facts, to paint the picture, to tell the truth, even when ugly even when uncomfortable, to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable, to challenge the abuse of big institutions. While so much of journalism today has turned into tweets and Facebook and Instagram posts, today says real journalism still matters. And that's why we're here today. On the issue of the Child Victims Act, it was the daily news that told the story, that publicized the abuse victims that came forward. It was the daily news that started the drumbeat for justice. It happened in this room. And at a time when some think that journalism has been reduced 
to no more than 280 characters in a tweet. The Daily News wrote 252 articles on the Child Victims Act since 2009. The Daily News wrote 223 articles, 29 editorials, 975,000 characters on one issue, one topic over 10 years. That, my friends, is real journalism, and that's how we make change. It is that tenacity, that stubbornness, that indignation, that exercise of true journalism, that New York toughness that brings us here today. Like Jacob Reese and photojournalism and the Pentagon Papers and Watergate and the Me Too movement covered by New Yorker magazine, like Arthur Brown and Heidi Evans and Beverly Weintraub's coverage of 9-11 responders so they got the health care they so desperately needed, like Greg Smith's work exposing the horrendous conditions of NYCHA where children are being poisoned, the Daily News was relentless in their telling of the truth. In many ways, in the spirit of the greats, I can only imagine Jimmy Breslin looking down on us today <laughs> saying, you did good, kids. And once the Daily News exposed the facts, then we needed a courageous government official to pick up the baton and force government action. And it was hard. It's hard to change the status quo. It's hard to get legislators to take controversial positions. Why should they? Politics is about making people like you, right? It's about making friends. Why would they take a difficult position? It's hard. It's hard to take on your own church. Well, there are a courageous few for whom it's not about politics. It's about making change, even when the change will cost you politically, even when you are ridiculed, even when you are ostracized by institutions that meant so much to you for so much of your life. Assemblymember Marge Markey goes down in the history books as a courage and profile. Stand up, Marge Markey. She is with us here today. So is Michael Dowd, who has fought this fight for many, many years. Pleasure to be with you, Michael. Thank you. But justice is not an easy road. The moral arc of the universe is long and it bends towards justice with a caveat. If people work to bend it towards justice, I don't believe Martin Luther King Jr. was saying it bends automatically. We must bend it. I supported the Child Victims Act every year. Senator Hoyleman and Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal fought for it. Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson fought for it. But we saw major institutions rise up, and we saw it fail year after year after year. For the past 13 years, the bill died in the state senate. Not because people voted against it, but even worse, because they wouldn't bring the bill to the floor. They wouldn't tell the people of the state the position of the politicians. This year, with a new Senate, the bill came to the floor. It passed unanimously 63 to 0 because even the Republicans voted for it. Because once the truth sees the light of day, it is undeniable. And the bill passed. So today we are about to sign a bill, long in coming, that makes history. Why? Because great journalists excelled. Because elected officials 
persevered and showed courage. But most of all, we are here today because courageous victims who endured great pain and great anger, anguish and great humiliation had the courage to come forward and tell their story. And they sacrificed their personal privacy so that others did not have to feel the same pain. Catherine Robb, who was abused starting when she was nine years old, who became a lawyer so she could use her skills to protect children. Congratulations, Catherine Robb. Like Stephen Jimenez, who was abused by a school teacher from the time that he was 10 to 13 in closets and locker rooms, but who turned his pain into a force for change. Congratulations, Stephen. Congratulations. This bill legally changes the law and gives victims until their 55th birthday to bring a civil suit, their 28th birthday to seek felony charges, and their 25th birthday to seek misdemeanor charges. It creates a one-year window to revive old-time barred cases, and that is all good. But the bill, to me, does something else that is, frankly, more important. This bill brings justice to people who were abused. The bill rights the wrongs that went unacknowledged and unpunished. And that compounded the pain. To be abused, to suffer in silence for decades, and to have society as a whole not even acknowledge your pain and abuse. And in many cases, to protect the perpetrator and to demonize the allegation that one would make against the perpetrator made this situation even more difficult and more horrendous. Today says justice is done. Today says nobody is above the law. The bill says for those who are cloaked with authority that that cloak is not impenetrable that if you violate the law, we will find out and you will be punished. And I truly hope that for the millions of victims, and there are millions who have experienced this gruesome crime, they know it was not their fault. They did nothing wrong. And that this horrific wrong was done to them not because of anything they did or anything they should have done. And today that wrong is exposed and it is made right. And this is society's way of saying we are sorry. We are sorry for what happened to you. We are sorry that it took us so long to acknowledge what happened to you. We are sorry that justice took so long. We are sorry to the other victims who in the interim were also violated because society was slow in acting. Today, after a 13-year ordeal and after decades of personal pain for so many, I hope you can find a slight sense of peace and a slight sense of vindication that you did not endure this pain without reason. You endured this pain so that others will not now feel that same pain. Your suffering will stop others from suffering. You have put the world on notice 
and you expose this silent, secret scandal so that the generations that follow will be aware that parents will be on notice, that children will have safe harbors, that wolves in sheep's clothing have been revealed, and predators will no longer lurk in the shadows. Thank you and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marcy Hamilton. Thank you so much, Governor. I'm Marcy Hamilton, and I'm a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and I run Child USA, which is a nonprofit I started for this cause. It wasn't enough to be a law professor anymore. It was time to dedicate my full career to this. I want to add to Governor Cuomo's thanks to the New York Daily News. Michael O'Keefe, where are you? Michael O'Keefe, thank you. Mike was dogged, Ken Lovett was dogged, Christian Red was dogged, uh, and the editorial board of the New York Daily News was absolutely amazing. There was never a moment when they did not want to cover this issue, and we are so grateful to you because the truth changes the world. Thank you for that. So what are we doing today? What we're doing today is standing on the shoulders of giants. We're standing on Barbara Blaine's shoulders. We're standing on Richard Sipes' shoulders. We're standing on the shoulders of every survivor who didn't make it over the last 15 years. We are fortunate to be here. And I am so grateful for every survivor, for every advocate, for every lawyer, you all made this happen. And six months from today, a window of justice opens for survivors who were abused in this state. And may you all come forward. God bless you. <laughs> today is a day when we celebrate love. St. Valentine's Day. It's the only day I ever wear this jacket. St. Valentine's Day is the day we will always remember when New York and Governor Cuomo said, no longer do the predators and the institutions get to win. We love the victims. This is the perfect day for you to know that this is about you. This is about your families and this is about your children. So thank you for doing this on Valentine's Day. Governor Cuomo has been an unwavering champion of the Child Victims Act, and we were especially grateful that he included it in his 100 Days Justice Agenda. He is the only governor. <laughs> he is the only governor in the United States who has taken such a leadership role on statute of limitations reform for the victims. He has been out there, he has pushed it, and there was no time wasted once the path was clear. Thank you, Governor Cuomo, so much. So I hope, with the pain and the suffering that's inevitable, in this arena, that everyone here today will be able to take a moment to say, thank God and celebrate. You deserve it. Thank you. Please welcome Senator Brad Hoyleman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm State Senator Brad Hoyleman. You know, 
Um, it's rather uh, intimidating to be here in a, in a newsroom, Governor. You know, there's a, a quote about reporters. Uh, a reporter tells his editor that he doesn't want to be a nuisance. And his editor replies, that's a wonderful quality for a human being, but not for a reporter. <laughs> and I want to thank the Daily News, uh, as has been echoed, uh, for being such a nuisance to Albany on this issue. Uh, really, it was the Daily News who shone that spotlight uh, after the Boston Globe did the same uh, in their area for so many survivors here in the New York area. And that meant the world to me, and I know it did to Assemblymember Rosenthal, and before her, Assemblymember Marge Markey, who we all have to remember today for her advocacy. Uh, I want to thank uh, the governor um, for his courage in standing up for that American principle of the separation of church and state. That is so significant, uh, and it's significant in this governor as he's demonstrated time and time again. And I want to thank Andrew Stewart Cousins, the leader of the Senate Democrats. She not only made child sexual abuse a priority for the conference, she helped move this legislation. Last year, she fought to have it included in the first week of the state legislature, and she was the first Senate leader to actually bring it to the floor for a vote. So congratulations, <laughs> Leader Andrew Stewart Cousins. And I have to acknowledge my Senate colleague, Anna Kaplan, is, who's here, and all the Senate Democrats. And then finally, I'd like to uh, thank Marcy Hamilton uh, for being the godmother of statutes of limitations. Uh, I didn't know that was a category, but you deserve it. Uh, and, then, and then finally, of course, to the survivors. Uh, by burying your souls, you opened up the hearts and minds of state legislators like me and all of my colleagues. So this is your day because we stand on your shoulders. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you, Assemblymember Rosenthal. And thank you, Daily News and Ken Lovett for exposing that pizza party. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal. Thank you very much. Um, I am elated to be here today, as I'm sure all of you are as well. Today, time is up. Time is up on the predators who for too long hid behind our weak laws. And time is up for the institutions that hid the abuse. Today, after 13 long years of fighting, the Child Victims Act becomes law upon the signature of Governor Cuomo, who has championed this amazing legislation. New York today creates a pathway to justice and perhaps a modicum of healing for the survivors who for years have suffered. But they have not suffered alone because we have been with you. It took a long struggle to get here. But my colleagues in the new Senate who put the Child Victims Act at the top of their list. My great, <laughs> my great partner in the Senate who did his best to get it done under the wrong regime, but got it done under the right one. <clears throat> my speaker, Carl Hasty, who never shied away with putting this at the top of his agenda. And my colleagues, my brave colleagues in the assembly who voted for this during my time, three times during March Markey's times, three times bravely, some of whom risked their elections, but bravely said, this is the right thing to do. And we also found out that some of them were abused themselves. So I applaud them for their courage and taking a stand and I thank them. A special thank you to Marge Markey, who carried this bill despite threats against her, despite people vilifying her. She stood strong, and she inspired me and all of us to continue this struggle. <laughs> Today,
to the advocates, Safe Horizon was my guiding star, and all of you survivors here and those watching on the governor's live stream, which I hope they are, thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be a foot soldier in your struggle. I don't know that there is anything more important I could have done with my life thus far, but to help Shepard, along with all my colleagues, this legislation into law so that Governor Cuomo could sign it. Today, the hard work ends, but for many, the hard part begins. Now the clock begins to tick, and those who were harmed as children begin to make the difficult decision about whether to take action under the newly opened window. New York stands with you today, no matter your decision. We stand with you every day on your journey, and we honor your courage. Thank you. Governor Cuomo, let's sign that bill.